More Stories Podcast with regularity, vigilance, unstoppable, power trip by Monster Magnet. Woof! I'm way too busy power tripping! Wow! That might be one of the best bands that didn't like make it, make it. Better than Mud Honey. I don't know. That album, uh, whatever Monster Magnet album it is with Power Trip and Crop Circle, you go, how, how did these guys not become Metallica? They're insane. Hey, if you're in Monster Magnet or know anybody that knows anybody in Monster Magnet, I love them. Tell them respect from me. The KID. Hey, man. Hey, man. It's me, JJ. This is my podcast, More Stories. I'm going to help you guys uh, fix up your to-do lists because you're doing to-do lists wrong. Last episode, I talked a little bit about liminal time. Right now, we're in liminal time. We don't go to work. We have to homeschool our kids. Every day when we wake up, we're learning what there is to do. You know, liminal time, liminal space. It's a waiting area. It's purgatory. It's a doorway. You work at a company, I said, for, you know, 30 years. You get fired on Tuesday. You wake up Wednesday morning. You have no idea what to do all day because you're used to going to work. That's, that's where we're at. And that's when you can get really, really good at what it is you want to be doing. This is when you get your shit together. There's nothing else to do. There's no one to share your bullshit with. There is no mirror of whatever lie you tell yourself and present to the world. We're alone with our families. You can't wear a mask right now. I mean a mask, a facade. You, you can't act one way if you're not that way through this entire quarantine. You, you Eventually, you're you, and you're alone with you, and you either, great, everything's cool, or you're looking in the mirror and you think to yourself, I, I, I don't like this. This isn't what I thought the best me would be, myself included. I love this quarantine. I love solitude. I've learned more about myself in the last months than maybe... I don't know, in the last 20 years? Inventory. Every company that has a business has to take inventory daily. Every single day. Or they're no longer in business. Period. Nowhere on earth is there not an accounted record of what happened to the item. Anywhere in business that's thriving. If you work, uh, you own a Napa Auto Parts... You know exactly how many brake pads went out. You know exactly how many people paid with credit card. You take inventory every day. Who paid with credit card? Who paid cash? Okay. What's the zip code on that credit card? Oh, really? That's out of state. Interesting. Okay. You know all the data. Inventory. People don't do it. We should take inventory. We need to take inventory. We need to know what is on our shelves. We need to know what it is we offer. What's the product we have that nobody else has? Just like a business does, inventory. What do I have that no one else can provide? What is my surplus that the public demands? For me, it's separating people from concern. Whatever iteration, whether it's life coaching, coachjj37 at gmail.com, coachjj37 at gmail.com. If you need help, hit me up. I can help you. Haven't failed yet. And I won't. Take inventory every day. What do you have to offer? What are you selling the world? What does the world need that you provide? There's something that you do. You may be in a job and not a career, and you may be wondering what your passion is, what your purpose is. That's fine. Like I said, passion's a feeling. Passions change. Feelings change. But in the meantime, before you know what your quote-unquote calling is, what are you bringing to the table? What will you No matter what happens, if it's raining, if it's sunny out, if you go to the park and throw a ball with your dog and maybe you pass two people, or if you go to a a Pearl Jam concert, all right, hey guys, we made the bit, the J. Moore podcast called Stories, yeah, oh, see, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, what do you contribute to the world? It could be kindness, it could be compassion, it could be understanding, patience, whatever it is, it's something that you are. So don't think about what your purpose is. Dial it back to your shelves inside you right now. What do you currently have that you can provide the world with? 
Think of it like that. It's really cool. What will you contribute to the world today? That's it. Okay? That's it. Take your inventory. What do I sell that nobody buys? What do I sell that people are just kind of looking at and it's a waste? It shouldn't be on my shelves. Anger, sadness. Not, I mean, I can't take sadness off the shelves. We'll get that in another episode. What, what can I remove from my shelves? Guilt. I can remove anger. I can remove fear. I can remove assumption. I can remove gossip. I can remove that person who's a fucking scumbag I found out. Whatever. It's all hypothetical, by the way. Okay? Take your inventory. What's killing this business? My business? J. Moore Incorporated uh, Company Styles? Jack? Self-pity. Blew my fucking brains. I just blew my mind. It blew my mind. Let me try to talk like a person and not a teenager that's starting a band. It blew my fucking brains out, bro. Yeah, man. In a guy to Vita, like they were high. And then, no. It blew my mind. I was reading the big book of AA. I'm not advertising it. This is what works for me. If you want what I have, I can show you how I got what I have. That's it. Divorce us from self-pity, it said someplace. And I forget where I was, but I just got still. Er, the entire world just stopped. Me and the world just... Er, self-pity. I read it thousands of times in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I know if I wrote. It, eh, that's it. That's my thing. Me personally. This is from me taking inventory in liminal time. Every single thing I say, pretty much, is self-pity motivated. Like, can you believe what happened to me? Can you believe how that person acted? I'm not really shitting on people. I'm talking about actually somebody, like, there's a little disagreement, or somebody doesn't answer a question weird, and I'll share it with somebody. Corey knows this. My entire life has been a very low-level, constant droning complaint about some small injustice. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Self-pity. It's fa- it fascinated me. I caught myself yesterday saying something. It was seeking validation, boasting, and self-pity at the same time. I wish I remembered the sentence. I pulled it off. The hat trick of what the fuck is wrong with this guy. <laughs> self-pity. That's my thing. I'm a terrible victim, but I do want people to think everything was a little harder than it was for me. I guess. Because I'm fucking searching. Because I have time to search. I'm not on a hamster wheel called life anymore. We're just here. Take your inventory. What do you have to offer that you know you can offer? What could you teach somebody if they just shadowed you all day? How would they act at the end of that day? With me, they'd be exhausted because I never stopped talking. But they would learn eventually to be gregarious, friendly, extend your hand, look people in the eye. When you talk to somebody, be present. You know, I tell my son, when you hug somebody, don't do anything else. That's an exercise in being present. Okay, your to-do list stinks, and I'm going to tell you why. You make a to-do list, right? How many things are on your to-do list? doesn't matter. There's too many things. There's too many things in your to-do list. Think about it. You got things on today's to-do list that were on last week's to-do list. There's like one thing that you're not doing. So just stop. Let me help you have an effective way to get your to-do list to the perfect number. And that number, by the way, is one. One thing is what you need to do. That's what's next. I'll explain. There's actually two different one-word answers for this. Or uh, one-line to-dos. Your to-do list should only have one answer. This is what I do, and this works for me, and it will, I hope it works for you. Let me know if it does, if it doesn't. I have index cards. I love them because I can only write so much on an index card, so I have to choose my words carefully. And I have to write neatly. Otherwise, it's illegible, and I run out of room. I thought of that on my own. I'm a genius. That's an idiot. Thank you. You know when they say, hey, don't worry, it's idiot-proof. They don't realize every year I make a better idiot. Anyway, gang, on your, to-do, on your index card, I want you to write down your to-do list. Number it. Turn it uh, lengthwise up up and down if you have to. Like one, the modal, and this, that. All right, so for me, for example, this is a hypothetical. 
my to-do list in no particular order. One, uh, birthday card for uh, neighbor's kid. Two, pay the electric bill. Three, audition 11 a.m. tomorrow. Four, um, get a haircut. Five, clean the house and call back uh, somebody. So write down your to-do list. Okay. Now, time-wise, which one's next? Because no one can multitask. Nobody. A computer does not multitask. You don't know this yet. I'm going to tell you something that's truthful. Always. Always, by the way. I love you too much. Computers do not multitask. They switch tasks at a speed we can't understand. They do not do two things at once. They don't. Okay. So now that you know that, you're not multitasking. You're just doing two things, not 100%. You might do it at 99. That's cool. But what thing on your to-do list is fucking next? You can only do what's next. That's what's next. What's next is what you are going to do either way. So it doesn't belong on your to-do list. If it's fucking next, you're going to do it. Like, let the dog out. Like, if you have to write down, let your dog out, you shouldn't own an animal. You're like the kid in high school that has a notebook, and on the first page he writes, notes. <laughs> you ever see that guy? He's got a notebook, and it says notes on the top page, or on the outside. What is next? If it's next, it doesn't need to be on your to-do list, because all you can do is next. And there's only, listen to me, there's only one thing that is next. There are, cannot be two things that are next. It's impossible. Okay? Let's say you want to make a bowl of cereal. You just, what's next? I go take out the cereal. That's it. Yeah, but then you got to put, ah, no, no, milk. I don't know about milk. I know what's next. It's a bad example. Here's another way to shape up your uh, to-do list. Now that you've removed what's next, okay, with what you have remaining on that list, prioritize which is most important. Find your domino. And this is what I mean. When you line up dominoes to knock them all over, that first domino, a little more important than the 29th domino. Because that domino is going to knock over the other dominoes. What on your list, if you get rid of it because you accomplish it, gets rid of two other things on your list? If you can't do that, then your list is fucking crazy. Because on your list of two, like for me, the audition at 11 a.m. tomorrow on my pretend list, that's the thing that's next. And it takes care of, it pays my electric bill. I mean, I mean, it takes care of everything. I get rich. And it's at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Nothing's more important than that. So what I do now is I take a second index card and I write audition on it. That's my to-do list. I put one on my mirror in my bathroom. I put one on my desk in my office. I put one in my car. Audition, audition. No matter what I am doing, when I get distracted, I will eventually see an index card that says audition. It'll snap me out of it, and I go back to doing what is next, what is the most important thing, the one thing that eliminates other things that you would have to do. Okay? That's a to-do list. Write down your to-do list. Cross out whatever's next. Then find out the one thing that gets rid of two other things. That's your list, that one thing. Okay? All right. Now remember, don't forget on Fox. I can't even say it anymore. Hope that helps you. It will. Hey, do your inventory. This is the time. Be honest. Be real with yourself. Because we lie to ourselves the most. I love you guys. You know I mean it. Peace.